or meetup where we talk about chameleons and everything to do with chameleons and whatever's on your mind. Uh, this is a uh, week. The theme has been to uh, the, uh, the ways to give our chameleons a better life. And for that, I uh, just released a video and, of course, the, the podcast uh, talking about uh, the, my five picks for how to, uh, how to give your chameleon a better life. And what we're talking about is increasing the quality of life for our chameleon beyond the basic, okay, you've got the nutrients you need, and, uh, and then you go, go forth. It's kind of like they're little machines. So uh, that was the theme for this week, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. But we do have something that has come in the mail. Let's see. There we go. <clears throat> and so I am going to do an unboxing here. Anybody, uh, anybody know what this could be? Yeah, yeah. Well, if you've been on my on my Instagram, that probably gave you some spoilers. Ooh, I've got to make sure I don't cut myself on this one because that would that would not be good video. Give some praise. So, how's everybody doing here? We have, uh, in California, <clears throat> we had a very strange weather to where we were having this heat wave, and then all of a sudden we had uh, a storm come in, and so had a bunch of rain and some pretty high winds. Took my, my easy up and uh, threw it across the yard. Hey, Nathan's back! Nathan was there with the, uh, the premiere of the video. Hello, Sean! Very good seeing you. And uh, for those on Facebook, please know I can't see your name. Facebook won't allow me to see who's typing it. So if you uh, give me a message from uh, Facebook, please put your name at the end, kind of like sign it, digitally sign it. And all right, all right. And so Facebook user, uh, you're very welcome. Very glad to have you here. Uh, of course, it's probably one of my very close friends, but who knows? All right, guys, this is it. Hello, Lee. All right, let's. Oh my goodness, this is so nicely packed. Oh, let me get some. Okay, the unveiling. Is everybody ready? Everybody ready? This is from Adeline Robinson. Oh my goodness. Oh, we can already see the beautiful. Oh, this is so gorgeous. You get a sticker, sticker tube. Love it. There we go. Oh my goodness. Look at, that. Look at that. I'll bring it over here. Okay. There's no way that I'm going to be able to be in the uh, in the scene with it. Nicely packed so I can do this. There we go. There. Now I can see what's, what's going on. Beautiful ambilobe, red-bodied blue bar, ambilobe panther chameleon. Love it. Love it. I am so glad that Adeline finally did a chameleon. She is the one who's got the most gorgeous uh, scales, and she draws each one of the scales. Oh, let's try to get that light reflection off. And so it was just a natural. Uh, we just knew that when she did a chameleon, it would be gorgeous, and it is. So I love it. Uh, if, you, if you want one of yourself, AdelineRobinsonArt.com, uh, or if you go to my – let's see. I should put it uh, – I'm going to put it in the description. I'm going to write it down, the, the link to go get this. And uh, I figure if we get all of us chameleon people and we uh, buy buy a bunch of the chameleon stuff, she'll have no choice but to do more chameleons because, hey, the, the public has spoken. So really, really happy with this. This is going up on my chameleon wall here. Uh, put that over here nice and safe. So... I just had a rainy day and uh, uh, <laughs> rainy and windy, windy day. Uh, go ahead, let me know how things are with you guys. Uh, <laughs> Lee's from the UK, and uh, wonder how it is there. Is it? Uh, let's see. This is. Uh, it's getting into fall. I wonder how the uh, temperature actually it would be pretty nice over there. I would think. Anyway, I'm not there. I don't know. So, uh, but anyway, let me let me uh, let me know. Uh, how things are going with you guys. This is an interactive discussion. Uh, I will be talking about my 
uh, my five picks for how we can increase the quality of life for our chameleons. But uh, this is interactive. So uh, if you want to just hear me talk, you got a podcast and a video. Uh, but I, what I did is I was trying to figure out, I, I tasked myself, what are, hello, James, good to see you. Uh, what are the easiest ways that people could increase the quality of life of their chameleons? And and I gave myself the the limitations that I'm not going to, I, I don't mean husbandry. I don't mean, okay, give them the right supplementation, give them the right UVB and all that. Let's assume that all of that is in place already. And uh, let's see, Florencia says, cloudy. <laughs> oh, and then, uh, hello, mystical chameleons. Let's see, Florencia says, I think we fed my chameleon too much food because his tummy is kind of fat. Hmm, yeah, that may be <laughs> that may be the case, unless you uh, you got yourself a three horned Jackson's chameleon, and uh, it's actually a female because it's a Machaco Hills Jackson chameleon, and then you're gonna get a little surprise waiting for you. But uh, <laughs> I don't need no details, of course. Uh, so this is uh, the kind of thing. Uh, this is kind of a challenge I sent to the community on my Instagram and said, "Hey, what do you guys think if uh, you're gonna be?" giving your chameleon one thing that would increase the quality of life uh, outside of basic husbandry, what would it be? Um, oh, have a uh, catching bees around here. Yeah, chameleons love bees. Yep, they do. They do love bees. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well, first of all, my five picks. If you haven't listened to the podcast uh, and... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Lee Peterson says, I'm setting up my XL rep debris. Spent the afternoon picking off the top layer of expanding foam fingers. And <laughs> yeah, well, I talked about rep debris XL. So my, my five picks were, number one, to double your cage space. And I know that sounds, oh my goodness, that's not, that's not simple. Well, actually, kind of, it isn't as hard as you would think. Because uh, if you've got your typical rep debris XL, you just have a foot of space on either side, you know, two feet of extra space. If you have two feet of extra space, you can easily get another Reptibrase XL, put it next to uh, the one you've got right now, take out the uh, sides, you know, connect them together and take out the, uh, take out the screen from the sides. And you've all of a sudden doubled your, uh, your cage space. And that is a huge uh, increase in in benefit for your chameleon because you can do so much more when you go from two feet wide to four feet wide. I mean that that's the world. Uh, I, you know there there's I mean even if you went to thirty inches wide of a cage from two feet wide, that's a lot. Uh, it, it's a significant difference at that space. Uh, so it's really uh, it, it's not as simple as just putting the cage next to it and taking out the screen, uh, but it isn't as hard as one might think. And so uh, that was my choice. If I was gonna pick one thing that would have the most change for the chameleon's quality of life, it would be that. And and I, you, know, you all know, I own the Dragon Strength Chameleon Caging Company. I make my own cages, but I went out and I purchased two Reptibreeze XLs uh, but uh, I did that and uh, I, I started to put it together so I could put together a really good tutorial so people could do it easily. Um, now I do have, uh, I have it up on my website. It's under projects. I, it, it's, it's, I know that I've got to put more into it in more detail and I'm going to. Uh, so the starting is there, but uh, I, I'm, I'm going to uh, be filling that in over the week. But um, uh, let's see, if you've got the 36 inch wide by 18 by 36 inch, the, the good old Exoterra, uh, you can actually put the one cage on top of the other and then just uh, break out the screen from the bottom one. And you have a three foot wide by six foot tall cage. And that's, that's significant. Uh, so you already have the width when you use the Exoterra. So I would say add on some height to that one. Uh, and in Dragon Strand, I actually did something like that. I had a cage that was 30 inches wide and I made it and I made a uh, connector so you could actually put one on top of the other. And it was a quite the uh, quite the nice cage. 
Uh, so what I'd like to know from any of you, have any of you put together cages? Uh, the Reptibreeze XL, have you ever merged one together? Um, oh, Bill says, we have completed the custom cam castle. The Mangler loves it. Game changer. <laughs> That's from Bill. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Two by two by four foot is a good, I guess a good minimum. But anybody who has gone to 30 inches or 48 inches knows that there's a huge difference. Uh, there's so much more that you can do. And I would love uh, to have a... Um, I'd love for it to be standard in the industry to do four foot wide by two foot by four foot tall. I'd love that to be the standard instead of the two by two by four. Um, but I really do know <laughs> that it's, it is pretty expensive making a four foot wide cage. And the reason why it's not just as simple as doing twice the uh, the two foot wide is because there's a lot of structural issues that start to seep in when you go that wide uh the the materials need to change you need to have more structure in there because you've got a wide expanse of four feet and that's a lot when we're talking about uh like standard screen framing like you'd have uh with the uh, rep debris uh, you need to go to thicker frame or have uh or have more panels in there for structure so a four foot cage is actually more than twice to two foot cages just to make it structurally sound now when you're um oh hey kenny uh, thank you for putting your name in there yeah facebook is a real real pain but uh kenny you're welcome thank you very much for letting me know uh and so it's you putting two Repto breezes together is a cheaper way of getting a four foot wide cage. And you know, it, it, it looks a little industrial. It looks like you actually put together two cages that weren't meant to go together. Uh, so if looks are important to you, say you have a spouse that's not sure if they want this in the room or not, maybe you don't want something that looks like a DIY project, uh, then you know, it's worth it to get a, a cage that was made to be four foot wide. But if you're just talking about function and what the chameleon feels, the chameleon doesn't know the difference. Uh, the chameleon would be happy if you just put another X, uh, Eruptive Breeze XL next to the one you've got already. And hey, Connor says, getting the Dragon Legends in the mail today. Excellent, excellent. Uh, and so, uh, let's see, where was it? Where's it? The, and, and the reason why I picked the Repto Breeze XL and right reason why I'm making a big deal out of this is because there's so many Repto Breeze XLs out there. It's like the uh, outside of the Chameleon kit, which we're not even going to talk about. Uh, the XL is the most popular Chameleon cage. And so there are so many out there that if, I mean, I love it if everybody out there with an XL just said, all right, I'm taking down the wall and I'm putting on another one. We could increase the quality of life for our chameleons dramatically across the community just by all of the XL owners doubling their cage space. So uh, I would love to see that happen. And this is the start. Go ahead and campaign this and make it uh, just easy and standard for people to do this. And uh, our, we're going to have a happier chameleon community. So uh, let's see. Chameleon Zoo in Gaming is saying hello. Gonna be getting a chameleon on Christmas. All right, <clears throat> and this is perfect because if this person knows that they're getting a chameleon uh, for Christmas, that's what three months of solid research. And uh, this person's here, so you're getting some good solid uh, information as to how to take care of a chameleon. I prepare. This is use this time wisely and get what I what kind of um, advice I would give uh, you starting off is uh, don't cut corners to start off with. Uh, it is uh, it can be expensive. It is expensive to own a chameleon. Uh, we are trying to take a snapshot of a tree and put it into our living room, and that's that's not easy, and it's not cheap. And I, I know many people will 
try to make it sound like it's cheap, like give you the chameleon kit, which is, uh, you know, not, that's not a good way to start. Uh, so just be willing to spend the money up front to get the right setup. And the thing is, if you do that up front, then your chameleon is much less likely to get sick. And the chameleons are actually quite hardy and they'll live a long time if they're given that proper husbandry. So just uh, suck it up at the beginning and uh, spend the money at the beginning and then you won't be spending the money at the vet. That, that's really the way chameleons work. Let's see. Thoughts on converting a large wood cabinet. Uh, if you're good at uh, working with wood and doing that, uh, go for it. It's a, it provides a great structure. If you know what you're doing, you know how to get the, the ventilation you need to, uh, to make sure that there's airflow and uh, sealing the wood to make sure that it's, uh, uh, make sure that it's not going to get ruined by water. That's a great idea. I would say, uh, go for it. Um, let's see. Lee says, I find a lot of videos out there dealing with lighting, hydration, environment, etc., which is all great. Yep, yep. But I'd like it if there was a more focus on the behind the scenes, like keeping live cricket. <laughs> yep, yeah. Well, I'm going to be every now and then we'll be doing that. I'm going to be plan. I'm planning a uh, a Doobie Roach episode here coming soon. So, yeah, we'll. <laughs> That is a very important thing. It's amazing how we chameleon keepers end up uh, having to become uh, insect keepers and all of that. So, uh, yes, you're right. And uh, we're going to get a little bit more of that supportive stuff. Hello, Gabriel. Welcome. And welcome to the live chat here. And so that was the, my number one was increase in the cage size. And it's, it's not as easy as just putting things together, but it's not that hard either. Uh, and of course, I, I on the website, I've got a step-by-step -step guide, which is uh, going to get better and better throughout this week. Um, so second thing that I came up with was a uh, drainage tray. Uh, I am still surprised at how many people use paper towels and puppy pads and things like that at the bottom of the cage, or even substrate trays, which unfortunately all of the uh, major commercial cage manufacturers they just offer substrate trays uh, which go inside the cage which is keeping uh, water inside the cage and uh, that's kind of like the wrong thing to do so uh, getting a drainage tray which is a tray that goes uh, the cage sits on top of so it keeps the water away from the inside of the cage uh, it's it's a huge uh, jump up in hygiene and so that was my number two pick uh, it's not as difficult as one may think, you just have to find the right tray. And there's a lot out there. Uh, I selected, I, I found trays for a two by two footprint, a 36 by 18 inch footprint, and a four foot by two foot footprint. And of course, I put that on the website. So you're going to be, uh, um, you're going to be <laughs> able to get a hold of those, no problem. See, Daniel in Texas has joined us. We could do five episodes on plants too. Yes. <laughs> yes, there's a lot to be done with plants. Uh, plants are wonderful. And uh, one of my favorite parts of keeping chameleons. And uh, I've been known to have cages full of plants and not chameleons. <laughs> and just waiting. Now, I don't know what chameleon I'm going to put in here. Um See, Chameleon Zoo and Gaming. How do you tell the chameleon's gender? Well, Chameleon Zoo and Gaming, you are going to have to do a little bit of research into the particular species that you're getting because it's different for every species. Uh, do you know about the chameleonacademy.com website? Uh, that would be the part uh, place for you to start. It's got a lot of information for you, and there's a species uh, uh, menu tab where you can go and it's going to be talking about uh, in there, it's going to be talking about how to tell the difference between male and female or whatever species uh, in particular you are looking for. So um, now back to uh, with the drainage tray, the, uh, the one thing you want to do is get a standoff. So you, uh, the cage isn't sitting in the water. 
I that that's the one thing <laughs> you, you don't want to gather the water and then have the, the cage flood. And so I use a, a three quarter inch PVC frame like I showed on the video. Uh, and you really could use anything, anything that gets the cage to stand up like an inch. And then you got an inch uh, depth of water that can go down there. And uh, you generally don't want uh, you don't want a whole pool staying down there. But um, mm. It's really easy to do a PVC frame. Uh, the, the hardest part about it is cutting the pipe. And I, I know, I mean, me, I go into the backyard and PVC pipe breaks somewhere. Uh, give me a shovel and two things break. So I live PVC. Um, so I have a PVC cutter. But you can use any sort of uh, fine tooth saw if you need to. Um, and... Uh, and then you just put the put the pieces together, PVC, the corner pieces. You make whatever frame uh, shape you want, and uh, that's a really easy way to make a standoff for your cage. Um, and that's it. You can get a little uh, more fancy, and if you use the drip systems that you uh, that you have out there, like for the uh, the drip system in the gardens. Uh, then you can create a gravity drainage uh, with your tray by just drilling a hole in the tray and super gluing in that uh, one quarter inch tubing connector. Uh, and then that can drain into a bucket and you can just uh, get rid of the bucket of water whenever you need to. And so uh, I'm actually interested uh, for you out there in the audience, uh, what, do you, what do you use for a drainage solution? Uh, what, what kind of things have you come up with to deal with the water coming through the cage? Uh, put it in the uh, chat and uh, let me know what kind of things you've done. Uh, now, of course, with the Dragon Strand Chameleon Caging Company, every cage I have has a drainage tray design with it. Uh, unfortunately, the last three, four months we've been behind. Uh, we've been having to change manufacturing, and so I, I'm looking forward to getting back to having drainage trays with every one of my cages. Uh, and that should be by the end of, I'm hoping by the end of this month, uh, we have a prototype and it looks pretty good. So we just have to uh, get the production production finishing to it. Uh, so that will do it. I, I can't I can't have a chameleon caging company without a drainage tray. And so, and then I'm actually surprised that I'm still the one making the, the chameleon cages. I, I think I'm the only one that has a drainage tray for the okay leap has come out uh and they have drainage trays for their cages uh so i'm glad to see somebody is <laughs> is, is joining in and taking that up because every chameleon cage that's sold should have a drainage tray uh, and that's that's if i were uh if i were king of the world that's what i would do um so uh let me know let me know uh in the chat what you guys have done as far as drainage um now, as we go to uh, the uh, more bioactive, then we start to get have a drainage layer, and so that's a that's a valid way of dealing with drainage. Um, let's see, James is asking, what is standard sink drain to a five gallon bucket? Mm, I'm not sure what you're asking. Uh, could you ask that question another way? Let's let me see. Let's see. Drilled Facebook. Uh, a friend from Facebook is saying, uh, "Drilled holes for drainage. Put trays underneath. Our custom castle is on a baker's rack." Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> you got something on the baker's rack, and you can put a uh, uh, tray underneath. That's perfect. So uh, let's see. Connor is saying, "Let's see. I put together a dragon strand cage." I whoops. Oh. <laughs> There's something that came up. Uh, put together a drainage, uh, the best cage there is. Thank you very much. Assembly is simple. I even added a jungle backdrop and did the ledges green. Perfect. Perfect. I am glad that you took the Dragon's Rain cage and you put your own, you, you made it yours. All of these cages are just, are, are canvases for you guys to mess with. Don't worry about drilling holes in it to attach branches and all that kind of stuff. Have at it. Let's see. This was 
Let's see, uh, Connor says, I've seen a video somewhere with those cool little plastic trays for substrate that you guys were folding to size. Are those available somewhere? Connor, those are not uh, available separately, at least not yet. They are, uh, they are specifically designed for the leap cages, like the ones that you see in the background here. And, and they're custom size, uh, they're specifically sized for that. Uh, if you want to have <clears throat> a, a a bag or something uh, that you can put in a cage, I know BioDude has some things for his bioactive, and uh, those will go into your standard two by two by four foot cage. Uh, it's not like the plastic one that you saw, where it you know it, it affixes to the wall and such. Um, but uh, yeah, those are uh, custom uh, made for these leap cages. All right, Richard is uh, is saying happy good morning Saturday morning and uh, good Saturday morning to you, Richard. Bill, uh, are you? Uh, let's see, is, is that Bill is the king of the world or uh, are you signing a king of the world, Richard? <laughs> Either way, I'll share the kingship with you. Uh -oh. All right, oh, okay, so that's what James meant. meant uh, his his drainage in his cage has a sink drain in the bottom of the cage, and that goes into a five gallon bucket. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. And put a screen on the bottom and let it drain into a utility sink. Thank you, Daniel. Yes. Uh, we have uh, people in the chameleon community have found out that the standard utility sink that you can find at Lowe's, Home Depot, and such uh, actually fits the bottom of our two by two by four foot cages pretty well. And once you start thinking about, huh, what can I do with that? What can I do with what, how is that? Uh, like 18 inches, 12 to 18 inches of depth under a cage. And I would suggest, you know, uh, uh, and it's got a drain in there. So what can we do with this? Well, you can put a cage on top of it. I always, uh, I always screw the cage down to the, uh, the utility sink but you can fill that utility sink up with the dirt put a drainage layer at the bottom just put dirt in that utility sink plant things in that utility sink and uh and at the bottom it's got a drain and so it can drain into a bucket so utility sinks are a lot of fun to work with uh, i actually have two cages right now that are on utility sinks that i've had for and i've had them outdoors for years and years so it actually works pretty well Let's see, Leah's saying, I wonder if two by two acrylic sheet heated under the middle so it melts slightly, creating a gradient for water to drain down a central hole using plastic with holes cut. So Lee's talking about drainage. Uh, yeah, uh, that, it sounds like, technically, it sounds like that would work. Um, practically speaking, that would be a chore to, to do that right and to make sure the uh, thing is the uh, water would easily uh, flow out the ends unless you tipped it up. And so, I mean, I, I think if you, uh, if you really sat down and designed it and got the, uh, and really designed it well, then that would work. It's going to be a lot of work to do that though, but uh, you know what? Hey, do it and, and do it and tell everybody how to do it. And that's, that would be great. Um, wish they sold two by two shower trays with plug hole. Yeah, that would be nice. That would be nice. Small shower though. So <laughs> good, good luck. But you know what? They keep, there's always stuff. We can always put a drain into a, into some tray. Um, takes a little bit of finding the right glue and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we can do it. So, all right. Number three for uh, how to create a, a happier chameleon is, um, is actually, uh, it was a feeder diversity. That's what I came up with. Uh, and so that is, uh, that is where you just bring in different feeders for your chameleon. And, uh, and this is, this is working on enriching their life. So it isn't necessarily a physical husbandry thing, but a, a mental thing. And they've got brains. 
just like every other, well, <laughs> we call higher mammals, the uh, our animals, the, like the vertebrates, uh, and even invertebrates, if they've got a brain, that brain is a significant part of the animal's health. And we all know if we think, if we get a placebo, our brain can can heal our body faster if we think we're being given the right medicine. Uh, our brain can decrease the amount of healing. It can We can die depending upon our mental state uh, in extreme cases. And so every living creature with their brain, that is a important part of husbandry. And so our challenge is to figure out what is enrichment for a chameleon. And it's there. It's a little bit more difficult. It's not like a monitor lizard where you, they they want to run around the cage and they'll try to uh, uh, find food that's hidden inside a toy. Uh, chameleons are a little bit more simple, so it's not as obvious what they what would be enriching for the chameleon. But that's something that I think we in the community uh, need to start looking at, and and I have started looking at that and coming up with. Uh, experiments and ideas and seeing what we can do to give our chameleon enrichment. And the challenge here is we've got to be very careful that we don't anthropomorphize uh, because we humans are really, we so often fall into the trap of saying this would be fun for a chameleon. This would be enriching for a chameleon when really it's stressful for the chameleon. And like, taking a chameleon out to play, taking a chameleon out with you to the uh, grocery store or while you're driving and stuff like that. We think, ah, we're being enriching for the chameleon. Uh, we may even get reactions from the chameleon, but the fact is a lot of that is stressing the chameleon. A lot of those reactions that people see are stress reactions and they're not good. And so this is why we as chameleon keepers have an extra challenge when it comes to figuring out what is actually enriching for a chameleon. So it's, it's something we're going to have to work on. Now, I do know <laughs> that they do ex get excited about different feeders, which is why, um, which is why I put that as number three is to uh, be able to give them that, that uh, excitement of a flying thing. I mean, just put a, a house fly into the cage and your chameleon is just all over the place. Um, that's positive energy. And I can tell you, I am confident in saying that that's positive energy. So uh, that is something that I'm saying, let's do this. Let's, uh, you may have a staple feeder, crickets, dubia, whatever it is, uh, but change it up. Maybe every other week, but bring in something. And I know this, this costs, there's a cost associated with not only the, the bug, but the shipping, uh, you got to ship it. Like <laughs> you can't let it, uh, let it go in the mail for a week. So um, but I'd say uh, put that as part of the budget. I, I'd like to elevate that from, okay, this is a cool thing to do, to, yeah, we should do this for their mental health. And uh, green banana roaches, hornworms, silkworms, uh, just try something different every month if you have to. Maybe it's every month, two weeks, if, every two weeks if you can. So uh, let's see. We have a Facebook user. Uh, sorry, they, oh, Dan, oh, there he goes, they signed it. Hello, Dan, I uh, believe in wild feeders, with prosper research done, of course. Uh, yeah, this is, you're going to find a, a lot of controversy in the community. Uh, some people are concerned about pesticides, uh, pesticide re residue or parasites with wild feeders. I, I, I feed wild feeders as much as possible, and uh, I've, I've not worried about it. And I've not had a problem. Um, now I don't know how transferable parasite uh, various parasites are between what, me and North America and chameleons. Uh, so I haven't really looked into that. I don't know that there isn't transmission uh, possibility, but uh, I whether a chameleon can be a definitive host for a parasite that was designed for a fence swift, I don't know. Uh, some some parasites do are able to jump between species, but uh, most can't. 
Uh, a lot of times they can do just a little bit of a transfer and they become, uh, it's like a dead end host. Uh, so uh, that that's a lot that we don't know. But I got to say, the people who feed uh, wild insects uh, generally get very good results. Uh, and I do. I feed wild stuff all the time. Um, let's see. John is uh, we're talking about, he's talking about drainage here. Fed outdoor enclosures, outside enclosures for years and drain out naturally. Yeah, that's the easiest thing. I do that a lot. Uh, inside cage drain directly into five gallon buckets located on a cement floor in a greenhouse with drains. Yep, drains are wonderful. Thanks for all your knowledge in the fascinating hobby. And thank you, John, for joining here and sharing your experiences. Uh, and Connor says, I can't get my girl to eat a worm for the life of me. Uh, is that a... a a tomato hornworm, a hornworm that you're talking about. Uh, sometimes new feeder in, uh, feeders scare our chameleons. <laughs> they say, whoa, what the heck is that? That doesn't look like it's safe. And uh, hornworms are notorious for doing this. I've got chameleons that look at the hornworms and say, oh, forget that. I'm not going anywhere near that monster. <sighs> uh, the The... The way to get around that, and nothing works 100% for all chameleons, but is to get an extra small uh, worm, like half the size. That may be, uh, that, that may help them not be uh, intimidated. Tried super worms, the blue ones. I'm not aware of blue, uh, blue super worms, unless you're talking about I know the uh, hornworms can get uh, a bluish tinge to them. And if that's what you're talking about, then yeah, that's that's the number one thing that intimidate, number one feeder that intimidates chameleons is the uh, the horn, hornworms. We have Limon chameleon has his moments with hornworms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to find a lot of people uh, noticing a problem with hornworms. Uh, but once the chameleon actually zaps it, then they know, okay, this is good stuff. Um, let's see, back to uh, drainage. Ray is saying, I've used utility tubs since the 90s. We could buy them for $9. Oh my goodness, $9. <laughs> I'd love that. Uh, both inside and outside. Yeah, and, and Ray brings up a really good point. When you are trying to... Uh, do something inside it's not always easy and and um, utility tubs are really great for soil so if you want to have a bioactive environment or some sort of uh, substrate those utility tubs really nice because of course you don't have to worry about them being uh, waterproof watertight thank you ray uh let's see okay so that was three is feeder diversity and <laughs> Like green banana roaches, I'll just do this. Green banana roaches, they are, they fly, they are green. Oh yeah, chameleons just love them. But they are such a pain in the butt to feed off because they are so fast uh, that you have to hold them. You can't, and they climb up surfaces, so you can't put them in a um, in a feeder cup. So uh, unless, I, I haven't tried doing the, the Vaseline around the, to, uh, around the rim maybe that would work but uh yeah i've i've raised uh, green banana roaches for years years and my colony has been going for years but i probably feed maybe one one roach to a chameleon every year they're they're more like pets now uh because it just takes so much uh work to feed them and they're so small there really isn't a whole lot of meat on them so it's more of a mental stimulation than it is actual nutrition uh for nutrition hissers and dubia uh, i actually love hissers dubias are a lot easier for me uh, but uh and you can and i can feed much greater uh, uh sizes with dubias uh with hissers i really love the babies are so meaty and soft uh those are my favorite but they get spines pretty quickly. And even though chameleons deal with spines in the wild, I prefer, I, I'm a little extra careful with my, my guys. Uh, let's see. So that's three, four. Um, 
the fourth one what was the fourth one fourth uh my number four oh that was a security check wasn't it i, I may be messing up my numbers here but uh the fourth is a security check you guys have been listening here you know chameleons uh get security from height and they get security for feeling like they're they're hidden and so uh, if you do just check your cage say okay how high is their perching branch uh, and if you put it up on a dresser that's higher it's amazing the difference in your chameleon and can they hide um make sure you have enough foliage uh, the one trap that we have fall into is we have a lot of foliage and it looks great but then we realize well chameleon can't really get behind any of it uh because it's it frames the cage so it looks beautiful for our eyes but it's not functional for them so that's a a good check um okay then five what was my fifth one <laughs> um oh nighttime humidity yes yes i wanted to talk about this there is you'll see in the, uh, the chameleon community there's a huge debate over nighttime uh humidity and daytime misting and it's uh really a really uh, it's we shouldn't be debating it it's kind of a, a strange debate to have and it's, it's mostly political when you go into what the origins of that is uh because i mean there's scientific there there's papers that have measured the moisture loss that we get uh, that reptiles give off uh during the night and and we all know this we we fog a window at the night we wake up thirsty it's because when we breathe out we lose moisture um and so one way for you to decrease the amount of dehydration that the chameleon gets when it's sleeping is simply have high humidity nights and that way you i mean dehydration is a stress on the body it's not yeah i mean it's obviously chameleons live long lives uh when they're misted during the day when they're hydrated during the day but you can make it easier on your chameleon by giving them high humidity nights so they don't lose as much moisture during the night and that's just uh, and so uh that's one thing i consider i, I would consider as a uh, increase in uh, their quality of life by decreasing the amount of dehydration they get on a daily basis so well i want to open it up i'm actually going to have to close this off in about five minutes or so because uh, i have a meeting uh a very important meeting i hope to be able to share with you the exciting uh parts of this but uh any in the last comments in the last uh five minutes or so uh that uh anything you think about uh your your picks for how you would uh increase the quality of life for a chameleon uh let me know Put it on down and let me know because i would love it if we in the community would uh would start uh working on these kind of next level we do a lot of work on basic husbandry and we have to we have to so it's not like this is gonna <laughs> replace that but i think we also need to pay attention to the people who have their husbandry down and need to go to the next level all right well here's a question what do you do with your outside chameleons during winter will my winter is not what most people would consider winter uh, i rarely get down into the freezing uh maybe one or so upper 30s is the lowest i go in my area and and then during the days it's uh it, it's sunny even if it's cold this it's clear and so the sun can warm up chameleons and so uh most of the time i leave my chameleons outside during winter uh, once again i don't have winter like most people have winter i'm in southern california uh the real problem with outside keeping is actually the summers uh the heat kills chameleons more than the cold does and so my you get the right speech like my veiled my uh jackson's chameleons can routinely go down into the 40s low 40s no problem as long as they can warm up during the day and and they can if there's a lot of cloud cover and it goes down into the 40s and the day is going to be cold okay sometimes i bring them in and that's what you do you just bring them in you just uh, have to figure out your your 
uh, situation. And if the weather's going to be bad for too long, you bring them in. That's what I do. I bring them in. Yeah, Dean saying the heat wave this past week was stupid. Oh, my goodness. For those who don't know, we, we had a heat wave. Uh, a lot of people have had a heat wave. And it was like over 100 degrees throughout the week. That was horrible. Oh, we have uh, a uh, Facebook user. Super grateful for your input and efforts. Thank you very much, Bill, for that appreciation. And uh, Lee says, thanks for the content. Really grateful to have come across your channel. I am very glad you did. Thank you for being here. I uh, spent the last year researching and bought my first setup the other day. So I'm loving the process of setting it up. Yep. It's, you know what, Lee? The most fun is when you're setting it up once you're prepared. Uh, the biggest stress is when you're trying to set it up and trying to make it work and you really don't know what you've done because you don't have that research into it. So there's a lot of questions and a lot of frustrations, but you've done it right. You Once you've done your research, then when you're setting it up, you're comfortable putting it together. And that's when it becomes a lot of fun. And especially like, and start getting into a breeding <laughs> uh, definitely do your research there but uh, i'm glad you are having fun with it and that you're enjoying the channel hello commander quintero good to see you here uh and oh jenny wait a minute jenny you just uh, you weren't supposed to be here oh my goodness oh what the heck well jenny i'm glad you made it right at the tail end um yeah, because I've promised you a dad joke. I, I thought I was going to have this week off as far as dad jokes because I, I owe everybody, I owe Jenny a dad joke. And um, so uh, next weekend is my, I've had an extension um, for next weekend. So next weekend, be ready for dad jokes because I'm going to be prepared. But Jenny, thank you for dropping by. Very good to see you. Uh, but all, yes, I am going to have to drop off here because I got to get ready for my meeting in 13 minutes. So wonderful having you here. Thank you very much. And if you guys are on Instagram, uh, I'll be doing uh, doing a live session five o'clock Pacific time on Tuesday. And I'll see you then. Uh, oh, Nick's, Nick's joining in and saying, uh, yeah, so true. My PR in a screen in room. In Florida, they really need to cool down. Lots of plants and water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Nick's got it. Uh, heat is the killer of chameleons, not the cold. <laughs> so anyway, James, thank you very much. Taz plays. Thank you. And everybody, really appreciate you joining me here this morning. And I will see you online as the week goes. <laughs> Race making.